Lingby Rock is pleasant not only on the ear, but also on the eye. Its visual appeal lies in its very grotesqueness. Lingby Rock has always been considered grotesque. It is as dark as ink, as hard as iron, and scarcely bears any comparison to jewelry. Since Lingby rocks are so grotesque in their appearance, it's hard to imagine why they should inspire such affection. Well, the explanation is related to Chinese garden art. A Chinese garden is not complete without grotesque rocks, streams, buildings, and trees. The writer Su Shi was an advocate of the aesthetic notion that stones make gardens and studies elegant and beautiful. He it was who identified grotesqueness as a standard for rock appreciation. In his writings, Su Shi even recorded an anecdote about Lingbi rock. One day, he went to the garden of the Jiang family in search of rocks. That evening, in the garden, he talked and drank with a group of friends. But he drank too much and fell asleep on a Lingbi rock. When he woke up, he wrote the words, Dong Po Ju Shi slept on this rock and woke up after drinking. As a result, Lingbi rocks acquired a new name, decanting rocks. In ancient times, Chinese intellectuals adored nature. Lingbi rocks, with their natural sound and appearance, became a repository for their affections and feelings. Traditionally, five standards are used for evaluating Lingbi rocks. They should be slender, undulating, hollow, translucent, and grotesque. Rocks that meet all five standards are regarded as first-class rocks, but they're extremely rare, and they are very collectible. The secret to the Lingby Rock's grotesque appearance is found 800 million years ago in the Sinian period of history. The algae are flourishing in the vast expanses of sea, and in the sky, the sun is burning hot like a huge fireball, so that the water in shallower sea areas evaporates. Where the land is exposed, the dead algae mix with carbonates from the sea. In the course of hundreds of millions of years, this mixture will be turned into hard rock. In other words, it becomes Lingbi rock. Subsequently, constant movements of the Earth's tectonic plates twisted and cracked the rock layers. This, and the effects of hundreds of millions of years of rainfall, produced the Lingbi rock that collectors love slender, undulating, hollow, translucent, and grotesque. The fact is, though, that buried deep in the earth, Lingbi rocks are not works of art. They have to be refined. But the secret in the refining process is to retain their natural traits. Several essential processes are involved once a Lingbi rock is quarried. Freshly quarried Lingbi rocks do not have the shiny black surface with which they are associated. Covered in red-brown clay, they're known as rough casts. The rough casts are first left in the sun for a week so that the clay dries and falls off in chunks. They're then washed. This is done carefully to ensure that no mud remains on the rocks. 
The overriding principle in refining Lingbi rocks is to preserve the surface texture and natural colors to the fullest extent possible. This maximizes the pleasure and the appreciation of the rocks. This is a Lingbi rock once washed is ready for appreciation. To really appreciate a rock, it should be placed on a pedestal. An elegant pedestal may improve the Lingbi rock's appearance, but Lingbi rocks do not have a smooth bottom. They're given one by specialized cutting. This is a painstaking process in which even a tiny change in angle can produce a totally unforeseen effect. It's a process that's known among Lingbi rock lovers as seating. The seating proceeds in three steps. The first step is to decide where the rock's bottom is. A straight line indicates the base. The part above the line will be exposed, and that below it will be embedded into the pedestal. The second step is to choose a suitable pedestal. Wooden pedestals are most commonly used. They enhance the elegance of the rocks while concealing the unevenness and defects in their bases. The best types of wood for a pedestal are paduk and mahogany. They are hard and strong enough to bear the great weight of a Lingbi rock. Another advantage is that these woods become smoother and more elegant the longer they are in use. Once the choice of material has been made, the rock can be embedded into it. The fact is, a pedestal is fashioned after the rock is embedded into it. The third step is the carving, polishing, and lacquering. The biggest challenge in carving a wooden pedestal is to ensure that the rock fits snugly into it. That's why the job is normally done by experienced and artistically talented master carvers. Besides its unique sound and grotesque appearance, a Lingbi rock needs something else to enhance its appeal, an appropriate name. Uh, 有两种情况一个是直观性的对这个石头像什么不像什么根据它的表象只取其意再一种呢就是从它的意境上取其意而命名
example, a rock called tiger appears to be springing on its prey. The holes beneath it are where its legs rest. The simple strokes bring it vividly to life. The wooden pedestal lifts and exposes it to form the ideal angle. A Lingbi rock called Divine Beast guards the Chen room at the Palace of Tranquil Longevity in the Forbidden City. It gets its name from its resemblance to a fierce animal of legend that was believed capable of thwarting evil and bringing peace and security. A Lingbi rock called Pan Long stands before the Sweet Chu Hall in the garden of the Palace of Tranquil Longevity. It was one of Emperor Chang Long's favorite rocks. These vivid and grotesque rocks offer an insight into the spiritual enjoyment that emperors and commoners used to derive from appreciating them. Maybe it was nature's design that Lingbi rocks should appear in the ancient and mysterious land of China. For their part, the Chinese people, with their wisdom, imbued the rocks with rich cultural and aesthetic value. Still today, a walk to an imperial garden in Beijing can be accompanied by the natural sound of Lingbi rocks. The rocks bring the natural allure of mountains and valleys to the city. The true appeal of Lingbi rocks, it seems, lies in their ability to let us hear, feel, and converse with nature in an atmosphere of harmony.